It is no secret that electric vehicles are still a more expensive option than regular cars. But if money was not a problem, would you buy yourself an electric car? Is the hydrogen-powered car an even better option than the electric one? That is what we are going to talk about in this video. Although both options seem to be environmentally friendly, there are so many hidden factors involving that change in the whole tide of the situation. Except for the environment, there are a lot of key differences in how the two types of cars function. And this definitely affects the usability of the car, giving one a clear edge over the other. Let's get started then, shall we? Before we talk about the key differences, we need to understand the difference between a hydrogen-powered car and an electric vehicle. After the key process ends, both systems essentially rely on electric energy to run the car. However, it is how the electric energy is obtained that makes the difference. In a hydrogen-powered car, a fuel cell is used, which is filled with high-pressure hydrogen. Hydrogen is allowed to combine with oxygen and the reaction produces electric energy. This energy runs the motor, which allows the vehicle to run as well. So, what about an electric vehicle? In an electric vehicle, there is no such thing as a fuel cell. It essentially relies on a battery that is charged up like we charge our laptops and phones. Electric motors pull current from a rechargeable battery or any other source of electricity, and once it is moving, there is no chemical reaction happening either. There is only an electric reaction, thanks to the power the batteries were previously charged with. So, the question is, which is more sustainable? Well, there are a lot of differences in the usability and ease of driving a hydrogen-powered vehicle and an electric one. By the end of this video, you will be familiar with all these differences. Let's start with one of the most important aspects, the driving range. We are concerned with the number of miles both types of vehicles can run with a full charge. It has to be said that hydrogen-powered cars have a clear edge here. While most hydrogen cars can run about 300 miles on a full charge, we see that electric vehicles usually give a range of no more than 100 to 200 miles. Of course, there are some options in the Tesla range, like the Tesla Model S, which can match that mile range. But speaking about the average electric vehicle, its mileage does not even compare to that of a hydrogen car. That may sound like a huge win, and that is because it is. But wait till you hear everything. Suppose we are saying that hydrogen cars have an edge when it comes to the driving range. In that case, we must consider the number of charging stations available for both systems as well. The fact is that now, the US already has more than 40,000 charging stations built for electric vehicles. Now, this is not that huge of a number compared to the regular fueling stations, but it is not bad at all. To put that into perspective, this number was less than half of its current value, which is about 20,000 stations as of 2018. The number seems even more appealing when we compare it with the hydrogen fueling stations because there are not many of them around in the US. As of 2020, there were about 43 fuel cell refueling stations in the entire United States, and 35 of them are in California. So unless that is where you are planning to live, this could become a huge drawback. The 300-mile average range is only beneficial if power stations surround you. Now, that should be happening in the future, but it will take time as the number only increases from 39 to 43 between 2018 and 2020. How these cars charge and how much time they take to completely fill up are very important factors as well. We know that even the most superior EV batteries will take up to half an hour to get from 20% to 80% charge, now, that is not bad at all, but these numbers are put to shame when we take a look at hydrogen cars. A hydrogen car will take no more than 5 to 10 minutes for a complete charge that is going to last 300 miles quite comfortably. That is actually about the same time as refueling your petrol car, so it is definitely a huge plus for the hydrogen cars. It is a shame that this technology has not been perfected yet, and we will talk about that next. That is becoming the reason why we do not have a lot of hydrogen fueling stations around the globe. Unless that number increases, it is doubtful that the demand is going to rise anytime soon. So, that basically pushes the hydrogen cars into a vicious cycle. Clearly, the process which hydrogen cars use to power the vehicle is very, very safe. In fact, the only byproducts of that reaction are water and heat. This is a pretty solid advantage, which is exactly the same for electric vehicles. That is, there are zero carbon emissions. So, what is it that puts one of these methods above the other? The answer lies in how the source of energy itself is created. 
For electric vehicles, the answer is as simple as charging the batteries. Most of the fueling stations are powered by renewable energy resources that do not affect the environment negatively. But what about the hydrogen fuel cells? How clean and green is that process? You may be wondering that we already have so much hydrogen in the environment, so why is it such a huge concern to extract it? That is because hydrogen does not exist on its own on our entire planet. It is just not possible. It is a reactive gas that is going to react with elements like oxygen to produce energy, so you won't just find hydrogen lying around anywhere on the planet. There are many processes to extract hydrogen. The most common one is methane reforming. The downside is that methane reforming is quite detrimental to the environment. So if we are employing that process to produce hydrogen, then there is just no point. Because that damage to the environment would simply happen in an earlier process. In fact, things like methane leaks further spoil the fun because they are much more dangerous than gases like carbon dioxide. That is clearly not what we want. But in the US, about 95% of hydrogen produced is through methane reforming. That is probably precisely why the trend for hydrogen cars has barely picked up. People realize that they will not exactly be helping the environment right now if they switched to hydrogen cars. There are solutions, of course, but they would require time to be perfected. For example, it is possible to extract hydrogen from processes like electrolysis. Now, electrolysis has no environmental downside, but it is a very expensive process. The fact that it uses a lot of energy means more money has to be thrown at it to produce hydrogen. At some point, it just becomes unfeasible to use that process to produce hydrogen because it would drive up its price anyway, again causing people to not buy it. To make things worse, extracting hydrogen from electrolysis is only 75% efficient. So there are guaranteed losses of 25% whenever that process is used. So if we had to say, what is the most sustainable system right now? Electric vehicles or hydrogen cars? The answer is electric vehicles. The only reason is that electric vehicles have seen a lot of development, research and progress over the past couple of years. And people like Elon Musk have contributed greatly to that. As a result, all the processes involved in EVs have become efficient and the efficiency is only increasing. On the other hand, hydrogen fuel cells have a long way to go if you want to employ a method that gives no carbon emissions and is not expensive to use. That is only possible as time passes and more research is done on these systems. This brings us to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed our take on this. Which is the most sustainable car system in your opinion? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to our channel. Take care and have a good day.